This video is part of our Parallels Tech Byte series. In this video, we'll take a look at managing FSLogix profile containers as well as FSLogix office containers using Parallels RAS. With Parallels RAS, you can install, configure, manage, and maintain FSLogix containers, all from the same console and without the need for manual agent installations or configuring GUI policy. In this video, we'll focus on combining FSLogix profile containers and office containers. This is the Parallels RAS console, and we've landed on the site overview page. This demo environment consists of two all-in-one servers containing the RD session host role, the secure gateway role, and the connection broker role. Parallels RAS allows configuring FSLogix to all providers out of the box. In this video, we'll use the RD session host pool. To configure FSLogix, go to RD session hosts. Go to host pools and open the host pool properties. Now open the user profile tab. From this tab, you can configure all FSLogix related settings. First, go to the deployment method settings. From here, you can choose how to deploy the FSLogix agent. This can either be manual from an online source, installed from a share, or pushed by the connection broker. In this example, we've selected install online and specified the most recent version. Parallels RAS will make sure that the FSLogix agent is installed on all session host servers as part of this host pool in an automated way. Next, configure the general settings. On the App Services tab, you have the option to configure FSLogix settings that apply to both the profile as well as the office container. These settings include cleaning up invalid sessions, roaming the user's recycle bin, and automatic compacting of the disk during log off to decrease the size on disk of the container and save on storage cost. On the Cloud Cache tab, you have the option to configure advanced settings related to Cloud Cache. These apply both to the profile as well as the office container. The Logging tab allows you to configure advanced logging settings. Specify which components you want to log, which can be no components, specific components, or all components. Next, configure the log level by setting it to debug, information, warning, or error. Configure the number of days you wish to retain these logs. And optionally, change the log directory as well as the RoboCopy log path. And finally, if you selected the option to log specific components, you can now configure which components you want to enable logging for. For the purpose of this demo, we have selected a subset of components. Next, to start using FSLogix profile containers, enable it and select configure. This takes you to a dedicated dialog containing all settings specific to FSLogix profile containers. On the Users and Groups tab, configure any inclusions and exclusions you need. In this demo, we have included all users. On the Folders tab, you can customize what needs to be included in the profile disk, and optionally, you can also exclude any folders you do not want to be stored on the profile disk. On the Disk tab, you can configure settings related to profile disk itself. Configure the location type, which can be SMB or Cloud Cache. Next, provide the location. In this example, we used an Azure Files location, but any SMB location can be used assuming the share and NTFS permission that FSLogix requires are correctly configured. And lastly, configure the disk format, the allocation type, and the maximum size of the profile disk. On the Advanced tab, configure any advanced profile container settings. These are all optional, but for the purpose of this demo, we have enabled swapping the SID and username, as well as deleting local profiles when profile disks are being used. Next, to start using FSLogix Office containers, enable it and select Configure. This takes you to a dialog containing all specific settings related to FSLogix Office containers. On the Users and Groups tab, configure any inclusions and exclusions you need. In this demo, we have included all users. These settings are similar to the profile disk settings we used before. On the Disk tab, you can configure settings related to the Office disk itself. For this demo, we have used a different Azure Files location and configured VHDX as the format with a dynamic allocation type and a default maximum size of 30 GB. On the Advanced tab, configure any advanced Office container settings. These are all optional, but note that you have the option to configure specific Office settings here, like for example, enabling cache mode for Outlook. With all of this configured, let's take a look at the end result. We have opened shares towards the two different Azure file locations we use. The one on top is the configured FSLogix profile container location, and the one below that is the configured FSLogix office container location. The subfolder contains the FSLogix profile disk, which is about 300 megabytes in size. When mounting the profile disk as an administrator, we can see the user profile structure with various common folders you might be familiar with. The profile disk contains all user profile data, except for any exclusions, and of course except for the office container settings we configured. 
The folder on the office container share shows a similar VHDX disk. This time, as you can see, the size is about 1.5 GB. When mounting the office disk as an administrator, we can see specific data coming from the Microsoft 365 applications. For example, note that the ODFC folder contains the cached copy of the user's mailbox, the OST file. This configuration allows you to separate Microsoft 365 data and regular profile data. This is ideal if you want to use separate storage locations for these types of data, provide isolation from data loss, or, for example, apply different container sizes for these purposes. This concludes our video on managing FSLogix profile containers as well as Office containers using Parallels RAS. For more content, subscribe to our channel and browse to the Parallels TechBytes series.